You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Welcome again to this segment. Uh, I wanted you to know that uh, we're going to be doing quite a bit, uh, uh, quite, a, quite a bit, if you will, on the election process, uh, because that's where we are right now. Mm -hmm. we got, we got, we got, we're from a national perspective, and then we've got statewide elections, and, uh, and then we've got local elections. And what we want to do, uh, I think, which, which makes a lot of sense, is that we, we've got issues here that are pertaining to the state of Oregon. And then when you get it down to, quote, uh, th this particular area in the state of Oregon, it's re really the city of Portland. And Portland is the largest city in the state of Oregon, and that's a very important piece aspect. It's, in fact, it's the welcoming mat mm -hmm. for the, to the state of Oregon. Right. And so that's another major, major concern. And folks are moving around in the country, if you will, and people are coming in, uh, kind of like, if you will, the, where do we go with the whole issue of homelessness? You know, people are coming in, you don't know where they're coming from, and this, that, and the other. But we got an issue. It's a crisis, for that matter, throughout the state. But it's around the country. That's another, that's a major, major issue. Police is always kind of like an issue that always seems, seems to always be at the table. And folks are not trying to figure out where is it going to be coming from, going to. Education is another major, major issue in the state of Oregon. But being the largest, largest school district in the state of Oregon, as a, as a, as a many concerns within that area. Then the drug problem, that's another issue, aspect of it. So what we're going to do, folks, is that I've, I've invited uh, two friends, uh, two folks that I've known for years, who have been in the communication business as, as it relates to uh, a community across the country, for that matter. Uh, wrote state, national, and the whole nine yard. We've had some good, good shows, Bob and I, in regards to the presidential races in the past. I've whatever. seen some. I've and seen. Shahid, you know, you in the same boat. You've, mm -hmm. you've, in, you've interviewed uh, a number of uh, uh, elected officials and the like and issues. You've been at KBU uh, for quite some time. I've been at KBU and Bob's been here. Be, I mean, it's been years. I mean, I, 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 when I think about the number of years that we've been involved in this business, it's probably been. You've, you probably got about maybe 25, 30 years each. Mm -hmm. For that matter, just dealing with these issues, and it's going so it's going to be interesting, ladies and gentlemen, to 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 get the the re, the response uh, from us all, for that matter. Mm -hmm. And so I thought this would be a good way to start, and then shows from this from from this point on, uh, like for instance, next week we're going to probably have three hours worth of uh, of politics. Uh, with folks who are running for office of various natures, whether it be legislative, whether it be counties, whether it be city, mm -hmm. uh, even state or whatever. But the idea is that um, uh, we're going to be doing this. And, and so, it's, so it's going to be very important that uh, that's understanding. And the other thing is that uh, I'm saying to these guys that um, one of the things I'm doing is that I am also a, a candidate running for mayor of the city of Portland. And uh, again, that's, that's a major piece. But realistically, uh, uh, we're going to be interviewing issues. That's the key. Mm -hmm. It's issues. That's mm -hmm. what it's all about. Mm -hmm. So with that, why don't we just do a little quick background. So he wanted to just say, just say a, a couple words about your background a little bit, who you are. Well, I've been involved with uh, Portland Community Media, this uh, radio, this uh, television station uh, for uh, well, since the, since, it, since the beginning. Since Roger, right? right? Yeah, Roger Cable. since yeah. Rogers, Rogers yeah, Cable. And I think we had our first program in 1983, 84. Mm -hmm. It was over on Lombard Avenue. Yes, exactly. Right, and I do a, 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 a program called the uh, Islam in, in Focus. And right. this is to bring some clarity to the religious, uh, my religious affiliation. and. Uh, uh, I worked for at Oregon Public Broadcasting for a while. Mm -hmm. I did uh, did some internships there. I have a, a bachelor's uh, degree in communication from uh, the University of Portland, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I'm also like you mentioned, cable. I've been involved with them since since 1980. Yes, very much right, so. From New York. From New York. Like George Page. Yes, George so, Page. So that's right, George Page. That's, that's right, that's he right. Was my mentor. Yes. And, uh, just just, just about being involved in the communication. And I want to commend you. I want to begin by commending you for the work that you've done here with Oregon Voters Digest 
for a long time because a lot of us need need to be educated around various issues and you've done a great job. So I just well, want to I want to commend you too because the idea is that we were able to go across the spectrum because mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. some cases some folks would interview with me but they wouldn't interview you <laughs> and vice versa. And vice versa. So we got it all and then Big Bob came in and he did basically the same thing. So that was a really, I want to take, I want to take his thunder right now mm -hmm. but no, but that was, a, that, that's again, that's another reason why we're doing this piece, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. No, uh, well, I'm, as you said, I'm Bob Williams, and uh, Bruce brought me into this, you know, years, I, I, I refuse to tell you how many years ago, <laughs> but I, we've done things on uh, KBU, um, uh, not only Access Television, but also, um, what was the other one uh, where we did the, uh, the hour on on radio um well, golden hours golden hour yeah golden hours it was a senior uh, citizen program it was right. really good opb opb yeah Oregon public broadcast and so you know i, I started look, i was talking to my <laughs> wife and i said my goodness do you realize how many years i've been doing this with bruce <laughs> yeah. and and so you know but my but our idea is to get african americans and other yeah. people involved in the political process mm -hmm. um not you know, even though I'm the Democrat, he's the Republican, the idea is to make sure you understand issues. the issues yep. and do the one thing that is very important in this society, and that's vote. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You know, don't just go vote on one issue. You know, and so we've... Do your we, due we, diligence. We, yes. Yeah. Learn something about your yeah. candidate. Mm -hmm. uh, just because they can make a good sound bite don't mean they're a good leader. Mm -hmm. It just means that they can, uh, they can uh, attract your interest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have to find out what have they done? What, uh, who have they done it with? How do they bring people together? All those things is what we've been trying to do over the years. And uh, over the last year, I kind of did some, as the church say, backsliding. <laughs> uh, got away from it all because I needed a rest. You know, Bruce and uh, Shahid, they don't, you know, they are into it. They're, 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 they're in the pipeline and there's only one way to go. But uh, he's, also, he, he's also in it on Sunday mornings. Yeah. He looks at all the news shows anyway. Oh, my goodness. That's like my, so my daughter was down from Seattle and I know mm -hmm. I'm getting away from the subject for this weekend because my nephew plays for the 76ers. Mm -hmm. And so we all went to the game. Uh, we were at home this morning. They fixed breakfast and the whole bit. I'm there watching all the news shows. You know, <laughs> they're like, don't you get sick of this? <laughs> nope. <laughs> you know, and I realized, oh, man, I'm getting back into this. So I'm glad to be here. And, uh, you know, I'd like to kick this off if I can. Sure, sure. And Bob. just ask you, Bruce, uh, I know you've run uh, in the past, but why are you running this time? Well, I, Bob, I, I think it's, it's, it's very... Um, it's very important nowadays, you know, to really talk to issues. I mean, it's as if to say we, we're growing, you know, we're outgrowing ourselves. You know, we're, I would say the baby boomers, if you will, their kids have gone to the point now, you know, they're at an age factor aspect of it. Got a lot of folks, mm -hmm. got a lot of new folks, new ideas mm -hmm. and this, that and the other. And, and, and that, that particular segment has a sort of a, you know, they're, they're more educated, if you will. And as a result of that, they've got different values and this, that, and the other, and, and different, uh, i.e., trying to identify issues and whatever. And and I'm I was concerned about the transition, because I I, I noticed that when I'm when I filed to run for mayor, and I'd been going to several of the debates and, and this, that, and the other, and I noticed that the tone was not trying to relate to senior citizens, that issue aspect of it. They weren't talking about the, the issues on the table, for instance, like the whole issue of crime and not being able to define the definition of gang, you know, and because a lot of times right now, if, mm -hmm. if you don't understand it, people say gang, you immediately say black, but it's not, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Right. So my point is that there are just issues at the table that I felt that it was important to get someone that has some knowledge uh, to, to bring those issues up to the table. Mm -hmm. right. I have been, um, uh, again, like I said, I filed the last minute thinking maybe some other folks would be coming onto the table, but I didn't see it. So I filed at the last minute mm -hmm. to run for office. Right. I figured I'm, I'm more than qualified. And then I found out again that um, I was concerned. You got 16 people running for, for mayor. But then when you look at the form to, to mm -hmm. file to mm -hmm. run for mayor, 
All you need is one of two things. Either 100 certified signatures of voters, or if not $50. <laughs> and to me, I, I think I, I, I have some concern with that. You know, some way, shape, or form, something should have been, a question should have been asked of a person. One, uh, can you state three issues that are of major concerns mm -hmm. within the city of mm -hmm. Portland right. that you can I, identify and at the same time talk to a solution? Mm -hmm. I think that's a very important piece. And the other thing is that um, the outgoing mayor, let's say whoever that seat is, should they should have identified on that form the issues that were, that the person uh, that that time ran on, but now of a sudden, how many are left? And what's mm -hmm. left to be done? And then that should have been on there too with a response. Got me? Mm -hmm. So those are the kinds of things I was really, really concerned with. So uh, that's what. Well, yeah. I'm surprised that there wasn't more more people. In it. I mean, fifty dollars is all you needed to register, you know, to to, to run for mayor. <laughs> I'm surprised there wasn't more people. But well, they didn't know. Oh, oh, but okay. now they do. So but that's now they do. Okay. That's why we need to we need to close the door a little bit. Mm -hmm. Talk about mm -hmm. that. Okay. Yeah. But if if I'm, go ahead. Okay, Bob. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, one, one, one of the things I want to just bring up because, you, you know, I've known you, as you mentioned, for, for quite some time, and you, you gave me my first interview when you was the publisher of The Observer. Really? You remember? You remember? <laughs> and I, we was up in your office. It's been a while. Uh, yeah, That's right. Yeah, I never yeah, forgot that. Yeah. And you're very accessible, and this goes to show and demonstrate how long you've been involved with informing the community, keeping the community informed and, and being being aware of what's going on. And I'm like, Bob, my, my wife will tell you, you know, uh, when the news come on, don't bother them because uh, I, I try to. <laughs> yes. I'm a news junkie, so to speak. So, but but I just like to ask you too at the at the, uh, at the onset, what is it that drives you? What is it that drives you in this area? Well, you know, well, you know, so he's, I, I can pretty well tell you for you and Bob both too. It's just in you, you know. I mean, it's 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 something that uh, I don't know. It, it's just it's just a natural thing to me. I, I've I've gone through a number of professions, if you will. But I always come back to the same deal. Mm -hmm. You get my point. I know that I'm I'm efficient in e any of these other areas. But the thing that satisfied me, and gives me the energy to keep going, is this whole issue of media and concern for community mm -hmm. across the board. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the other thing too that with, with me that, that uh, I I felt I had something to contribute and something to say. It wasn't just a one-sided issue thing. I was able to deal with all the issues across the board, and you just take it for what it is, because we're all creatures of our exposure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the more exposure you get, the more you can get into this arena that we're talking about. Not necessarily have all the, have all the answers, but at least you can discuss it. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the issue. The idea is to put it on the table, mm -hmm. you know, lay for where it is, but, you, but at the same time, I, I felt comfortable in saying that uh, I'm willing to listen. That's the other key, too. I found, through the years, I found I, I'm a pretty good listener because if, if my point is that as I'm interviewing a person, as I'm interviewing a person, if they fall short on something, I can add to it. Mm -hmm. And that comes through looking at the news and this, that, and the other that helps them out in routine. And so I learned too, and, and it's, it's really good for me too. Okay, great. And that's, that's one of the things that I, I'll, I'll, I can say about you is that you will listen. Uh, and I've learned that my opinion is not the only opinion. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that uh, we've talked, we've discussed over the past, uh, is that if you come to me with the issue, come to me with a solution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you, how do you think we can work this? Yes. Yeah. And then we can, my idea and your idea together might be the best idea. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that I've liked about you, you know, as far as us and uh, working together. Mm -hmm. but. The other side is, you know, our youth of today, they want it. They want it now. There's no, it's, they want instant gratification rather than, as we grew up, it was long-term gain. Mm -hmm. Go to school, get an education, get a good job. It was a process. Now, they just want it instantly. How, how do you see bringing them into the political fold, uh, make, getting them to be more concerned about the issues of community, let's mm -hmm. say, rather than self, mm -hmm. just totally self. Mm -hmm. I call it the Clarence Thomas, I did it. Mm -hmm. I brought myself up by my own bootstraps, yeah. Yeah. you know. Yeah. How do we get the, the youth of this community mm -hmm. 
to get involved. Well, I'll tell you what, the way I will answer that is that, again, I'm running for mayor. And that's right. another rationale. We've got the largest school district in the state of Oregon and have been around the, the issues for that matter. I, I do understand what that's all about, but I also understand from a historical standpoint the successes of students, uh, you know, as it relates in other areas. Mm -hmm. And it just so happened here in the city of Portland, uh, you know, being the largest, we have no folk ed. You know, I'm, I'm a student of voc ed, yeah. vocational education, and, mm -hmm, and I understand mm -hmm, the mm -hmm, definition of mm -hmm. vocational education. It, 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 by, uh, it, it, develop, it, it identifies with the, with the basics, you know, the reading, writing, and arithmetic. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're taking an auto mechanic or you're taking wood shop, this, that, mm -hmm, and the other, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. you, you're more motivated to want to read because you have to in order to be able to be successful in voc ed. Especially right. now. You, you see what I'm saying? And yeah. we don't have that. And, and so and, and then with all these energies that these kids have, they, 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 then they tend to just sort of seek out their own and then, because they're growing, right? They're growing and relating, right? They're, they're, they're maturing. And so, you know, and you, and you know and I know, and I, we un, I understand that um, we live in a very sophisticated world. Mm. And if you're not educated, the only, the only other out that you have is the criminal justice system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then that's an economic entity within its own self. Right. And once it's developed, people don't let, let it go. <laughs> See, so the kids become part of that economic arm, mm -hmm. and we got to catch that now. So how how do we get? And I'm I'm gonna uh, do uh, break things into different categories: kind a black category, a Latina category, white category, mm -hmm. and the other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how do we get? I mean, you can go to one school in Portland, and it looks like we, you try to figure out what is the education system all about. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you have, uh, well, you have Russian or Slavic, yeah. uh, Asian, Pacific, you have uh, Latina, and you got black right. and white, and you got this mixture, and, the, and they don't understand each other mm -hmm. and their cultures, and you got this teacher it's just look like instead of trying to educate, they're trying to just keep things together. Yeah. How do we get away from that racial divide? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, and it has to start with our young mm -hmm. because it's growing up into they grow up and then they carry this on and become uh, this guy that's running for president. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. this is totally a, divi uh, di a right. divisive situation. Mm -hmm. So how do? Well, let me throw let me throw something out there, and I don't want you guys to join uh, to join the conversation. Uh, my thought is that we had a simulation at one point in time when it, it was English as a first language. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then we then we took on this other piece. Everybody wanting to identify with their culture because as we get more sophisticated, people want to identify. Hey, this is who I am. Type mm -hmm. routine, and we put it into our school system, which which really just kind of upset that whole assimilation situation. Right. Because it was. I mean, my point is that. People took they, they, because as as a youth or whatever you you caught on you because you're mm -hmm. dealing with kids and whatever, but it was English as a first language, whereas when you go home there might have been a difference in the language but you mm -hmm. you were able to learn the language, but it was English. You know what I'm saying? So so I think that's a, that that's something that I think we need to get back and 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 reinforce again. It should be English as a first language. Right. You know mm -hmm. the, the Russian all this that and the other. It it, it really would help out quite a bit. Uh, you go to any other country, and it's not it's, it's their language. That's it. And if you don't know it, you don't communicate. Mm -hmm. So if they know English, then you get an opportunity to communicate. But they don't. It doesn't look like they go out of their way yes. to make you make things. Uh, I don't want to say easy, mm -hmm. but I guess for the lack of a better word, easy for you when you come. You come. You learn our way of doing things, which we were doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. which which we were doing, mm -hmm. and then you know it just. I, in all due respect, I, I'm still kind of like puzzled in terms of how it got to the table. You, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, one day there it is, and I'm and I'm getting on the bus, and all of a sudden I got to speak Spanish. <laughs> see, <laughs> see, but it didn't bother me because I was out there communicating all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, in my own fashion. You got my mm -hmm. point. Right. But now today, I'm sitting there and saying, well, okay, fine. Now I want to I want to travel a little bit and whatever. I want to go to Spain or this, that, and the other. And if I can't speak Spanish, you know what I mean? But they do not understand the dinero because I, mm -hmm. I learned that in the Marine Corps. When I was in the Marine Corps. People understand money. That's right. And no matter. <laughs> What language? Right, right, right. <laughs> See, I guess this kind of goes back to some degree uh, the, the whole melting pot theory and so forth like that. But uh, 
uh, you and I, you and I, like you said, we have been dealing with these uh, issues for a, num for a number of years. And as a candidate for mayor, I have to ask you some really hard sure, questions. Sure, yeah, major. Right, because, throw, it on, throw it on me. Right, because I think Mr. Wien brought up uh, an excellent point in terms of the youth. But we're looking at uh, how do we prioritize some of the, some of the issues that are really, really, yeah. really important right. today. Right. Safety in the streets. Mm -hmm. Safety. We, we without safety, we have nothing, right? And we still have a lot of gang problems. We still have. It was just uh, a kid shot up here on uh, Alberta and Six uh, mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and just yesterday they had uh, somebody. Uh, they had about twenty gunshots on mm -hmm. Lombard and. Uh, uh, yeah, twenty-seven, lady was in a car eleven, or yeah, yeah, red cars and stuff. over, over yeah, and with, yeah. with, with with three kids. How, what what are your proposal, and what do you see as the differences between what's going on with now? I know we have a, 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 a African American uh, lead of the union, right, right, the police right. union. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, so yeah, give me give me some give me a sense of why I should vote for you. Okay, okay. Well, first off, we again. And I saw it too. We were all here when it, when, mm -hmm. we, when this this all happened. Is that we got into some things like, for instance, uh, the gangs, if you will, and and then we then all of a sudden we developed this list of of gang members, so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. these young people and whatever. And I think at one point in time they were juveniles before they were gangs. That's right. And you dealt with it as gang. And then being a former Marine, I was I was working at JDH. You know what I mean? And working with kids to get basically in the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. But I was only dealing with those kids that didn't have any other way out. Mm -hmm. You know, the kids that was going to school. I say go to go to college. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and the point is this, this was yeah the, yeah and the recruitment, which was good because that's basically doing the ABCs. And I felt good about that part. But that, that's one thing, in all due respect, that, that's kind of one of the things that I want to do, is that I want to get back to square one again. I want to I want to get rid of that gang list, and these kids are going to be a juvenile. And if they're an adult, they get treated as adult. But if they're kids, they're treated as, as juveniles. And I think that will help, because mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, it's not kind of like a, uh, that okay. That that would be that's one major major piece mm -hmm. that I think. And then well, if, 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 if excuse me, if, just for a second, but if they're adult, then they have to be tried as an adult, right? You would know, right? If they're an adult, they have to be treated they, according. They, yeah, they have to be treated yes. as an adult. Yeah, right. Oh, okay. Yeah, right, right, right. Okay. But my point is that we got a mixture now. See, we we got kids <coughs> being, being identified as adults. You know, the, the, the ID, the gang thing, you know. Well, get based on the crime that you commit, right, right, determines what what what. What level of uh, of manhood or womanhood you are? Right, right, you are now no longer a child; you're an adult because that's an adult crime, which is right. I think is wrong. Mm -hmm. I mean, children. We have to get back to the days where children and understand that even in today's society, with uh, computers instead of a pencil, that kids are still kids, yeah. mm -hmm. and the way they learn is by seeing, hearing. And experiencing, mm -hmm. and if they don't, and if they're experiencing daddy in jail, that's their experience in life mm -hmm. a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And until, and if they're not getting it at school, and they're not getting it at home, rest assured, it's gonna, there's some kid out there that's experiencing the same thing that's gonna bring them in, and they become a family. Mm -hmm. And that's what that's how you end up with gangs. I'm from Chicago, you know, we were dealing with gangs. When I came here and there was no gang problem in the mm -hmm. 70s, mm -hmm. you know, I was like, whoa, I am not going back home, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and then all of a sudden, uh, if you don't take care of it, it'll show up at your doorstep. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened to us. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, but how do you get the police okay, now that's, that's a good to point. treat everyone? Okay. Well, well, one thing I, I've, I've found, uh, again, running again in terms of solution aspect of it, I think uh, one of the things we need to clearly understand and, and, and folks need to clearly understand in the police department that the mayor is the chief officer right. in charge, is right. in charge. Mm -hmm. and because the perception is as if the police runs the city. Right. And that has well, the to police stop union. It, it, the, yeah. well, well, the police runs it. Yeah. They, they have right. law enforcement right. officers. Right. The bottom line is that um, as far as policy is concerned, Policy is laid out by the public. It's the government of the people, by the people, and for the people. You develop policy, you educate, if you will, and then once you've developed the policy aspect of it, then you identify training with that policy, mm -hmm. and meaning that the law enforcement are basically the ones that 
reinforces the policy aspect right. of it. But it's got kind of the mindset is as if to say the police basically develop the policy and then they lay out the deal. And we got to get back to going back to square one where in fact the police, what we're actually the, 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 um, uh, the voting public actually controls the, the department mm -hmm. through an elected official. Right. Friend, I'd be just an employee too, but I'm, the, I'm that spokesperson, if you will. But it's got to be clear that, um, that once, that's what it's really, that once mayor, I'm, I'm the chief, if you will, mm -hmm. of police. And, 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 then the, and then as far as police is concerned, they'll have the right training. And as far as, I, and, and, and then if, if they're being trained well, They'll know exactly what the policy is. If they go beyond that point, as one would say, they, they got to meet the arms of the law just like anybody else. You know, because you know, I guess there's a, there's a big issue about the 45 five day rule right now on the, on the, in the contract, the mm -hmm. police says, where meaning that if you shoot somebody or something does wrong or whatever, you got 45 days before uh, that you, you can respond to, to it. Yes. As far as I'm concerned, if you do the job right, you do the job. You know, uh, you, you, you do the job, something happens, you fill out the report, sergeant looks at the report, see whether or not it's right, you go back to work. You know, it's not about waiting four to five days to respond to this issue aspect of it. But now on the other hand, if it's, if, if it's determined that you've done something wrong, then in all due respect, you're not getting, uh, you, you're off. You, right. Determined by who? Was that? If it's de determined no, that you've you got done something wrong. That's part of that, that whole deal about okay. training or this, that, and the other. You can, let's say if it's, something happens. Right. Something gets shot. You, a supervisor checks out the report, et cetera. You write your report out. Right. They check the report and they sign off on it. Mm -hmm. See? But if, if it's something that, that is questionable, mm -hmm. then that's a different thing. You then advise the fact that, hey, you, you're out of here. Well, not <laughs> out. You, you, you get here. out. Yeah, you get your hearing. Yeah. You get your, your day in court just like anybody yeah, else. Yeah, right, 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 right. To, to, to show to where show, right. you get an you attorney. Were, yeah. You get the attorney the whole nine yards. Right. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, if you're found to be innocent, then uh, uh, you will you will be paid whatever you know, this whole yeah, business of go back to work compensated mm -hmm. whatever uh, mm -hmm. pay a little fees and whatever. But traditionally, we 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 haven't had that kind of relationship no, with, with with the black community and the yeah. and, and the uh, police department. Right, right, right. You know, going all the way back to Ricky Stevenson, but you yeah. was a part of yeah, right, you know right, that. that. Yeah. Yeah. you know, and the whole smoke them don't choke you know right. choke oh, yes. smoke them don't too. choke them. He was a former marine. He was former marine. Yes, and you know we we run up against and this is not only in Portland, this is across That's the country, country running into this, 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 this big blue wall yeah, yeah. that uh, doesn't allow for uh, independent right. oversee or independent right. investigation of, of problem, of, you know, police department, police department, right, of the police department in its relationship with black, the black community. Mm -hmm. Or, or so, any community. Mm -hmm. Or any because, community. Because uh, there's some white guys that have been killed by police mm -hmm. out there that, uh, oh, yeah. uh, you know, and they're in the police were found innocent, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, you look at it, and it doesn't doesn't go nowhere near the smell. Well, well, Portland had one of the most trigger happy police forces. It was known as one yeah. of the most trigger happy police forces in the country. Right. Well, that's why you got to have a strong mayor. You know, you got to have somebody right. strong enough. The current mayor, is, the current mayor is still he's the, the head of the police department still, now. Right? But still, my point is that that perception of who's in charge is still there's a question. Mm -hmm. I mean, jumping on just like you said with Stevens. I mean, in, in every incident of that nature. The mayor was not there being in charge, if right. you will. You, get, you understand what I'm saying? And we had, and then you, the other thing is that you've had no one else to talk to. Who do you call? Uh -huh. I mean, we got four, we got four city councilmen and a mayor. Uh -huh. Okay, and and this city here is not districtized. Uh -uh. See, we got to districtize this city so you can call someone. Uh -huh. If you're living up in northeast Portland or in southeast Portland or whatever, something happens in southeast Portland, that should be a, a city council person that you can call right. and say, hey. Look here, blah, 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 I got a problem, whatever. They don't have that in here. So that's one of the things I want to see. I want to, I want to get back to districtizing the city of Portland. Mm -hmm. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And then I think that, then people can have some discussions, you right. know what I mean, along that particular line. I bet if you walked downtown and just took, took a camera and a microphone and anybody and somebody passed by and you say, can you tell me who the mayor is? Yeah. And two city councilmen. Mm -hmm. uh, they might get the mayor. They won't get there. They won't get city councilmen. But they have no idea. Mm -hmm. You know, well, what uh, what is the job of a city council yeah, person? They don't. They don't. They have no idea. You know, and and it's it's uh, if people are dumb about the facts, they can't complain. Mm -hmm. They can't fight you. Right. 
And that's what the city has done, did, is dumb down yeah. the, the citizens. Yeah. And, and we yeah. as citizens have to make that change because well, we're in charge. And of course, we remember Charles Jordan. Oh, yes. Charles, uh, Charles, Charles was Jordan. Charles Jordan. He was the city commissioner. commissioner. And police and commissioner. His, and police commissioner. Right. And, and, and the problems he had trying just to being in charge. just be in charge. That's right. That's right. No, no, that's a fact. And that's why I'm saying we got to change the system a bit. Okay. Now. Yeah. And, and that's one of the things I want to do. I'm going to put it on the table. It's like anything else. I'm going to put it on the table for the people aspect mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. And that's why I said that, one, we need to districtize the city. We justify the city mm -hmm. and, and, and quarters, if you will. You got me? And right. you got a natural boundary, for instance, uh, uh, with, the, with the river from, mm -hmm. from north to south. And, and then you've got uh, from east to, and east to west on, mm -hmm. on Burnside. Mm -hmm. right. So I mean, with the river aspect of it, okay? And let's say, uh, I'm just going to use, use this as a for instance, let's say Nick Fish is assigned to uh, uh, northeast, the, the northeast segment of that aspect mm -hmm. of it. You got my point? And the rationale behind that, Nick is a lawyer. He has a background in, in, in legal, you know what I mean? He's a, he's a civil rights lawyer aspect of it. And so you've got, uh, I think you've got about a couple of uh, neighborhood associations. we got seven of them. But let's say you had two neighborhood associations in each district. You, got, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They could have those discussions. So, so the idea, i.e., let's say gang, I'm just using that as a friend. Because if people say, people tend to look at Northeast Portland as <coughs> the black community. Okay, right. if that's the case, it's not necessarily the case. Mm -hmm. But the point of it is, is that, is that Especially not if now. they want to deal with the gang thing of this, that, and the other, then they have that discussion. Those right. neighbors associated mm -hmm. have that discussion. And it's Nick's responsibility to put those those pieces together with a solution and take them up to the mayor's aspect of it, all of them for that matter. Mm -hmm. Then you prioritize, if you will, those issues with solutions aspect of it. And then, then you have a discussion and right. make it transparent to let the people know across the board of what's going on because you got to put a budget to it right you got 10 items you got enough money for eight of them mm -hmm. so you need to have that discussion mm -hmm. and, then, and I think that that may have hopefully they'll, they'll stick on the wall a piece but but people well, are gonna start need to understand that they're in charge mm -hmm. but when you so when you so when you start looking at electing someone that's why you're saying you got to vote but you got to know one does the person is the person familiar with the issues right. and Absolutely. do they have a solution to the issue right. that's the way you got to vote but you know, are they we're willing not doing to carry today. your water? Yeah. You know, I mean, we have people that are elected in this state that just have a just have a job. Yeah. You know, they don't, they go they might go to the meeting, but then come election time, they are out there and they talk about the the mini, the minuscule things that they've done, and you know, you in this in the, today's age, you need someone that's going to fight to ch make change. To make life better, mm -hmm. that's what that's what I see a poli uh, a politician is is there for mm -hmm. to make life better for his constituents and those around his area no, or her well, area. As you said, we don't need politicians. We need folks who can identify the issues right. yes. and the solution to those issues. That's it. You see what I'm saying? And make well, it very very clear. Right. Good. Well, I just want to just yep. really be clear on what specific proposals yeah, exactly. that we are looking at yeah. to address the this, this situation of safety in the streets, with gang prevention, uh, 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 police police accountability, uh, and, and how you know how to, how that's going to work, and what's different, how that's going to be different from what what is actually well, happening now. now. Yeah, yeah. Now you understand. Now w w one can talk. I, I say I'm, I'm talking to solutions. But all I can do is throw it on the table. Right. right. That's, that's what I'm saying. For and hopefully, as a and hopefully it makes sense. As a candidate for mayor. That's right. As, and hopefully it makes sense. You got my point. Right. As opposed to just. Just saying, well, gee whiz, uh, I got so much money, and, uh, and that you bring into another area because, like, now you got 15 people, and, like, for instance, they will make the point about, well, we will only interview the, the top three candidates if they got money, if they got money or status. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the folks can't even interview. See, my, 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 my attitude to that piece is that if you file to run for office, they should all be treated the same level. Because right. some of those folks down below could have some issues uh -huh. that, that could resolve some of the problems. Uh -huh. See, that's a very important piece. Uh -huh. See, but they play the game, so then, so consequently, and don't get me wrong, oh, yeah. the people who pick the top three are naturally, they've got their interest. They, got, they have giving an them interest money. in those top three. That's, 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 right. Know, that's we, right. We, that's we, right. we, we, already you know, know, we know how the game is that, played. That's right, that's right. And, and that's why I'm saying I'm, yeah. I'm running because I got that background. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. okay. But but how do you get how do you get the people interested in the campaign and what will you do? 
to get more people interested mm -hmm. in right. going to the poll. Okay. That's okay. that's what I want well, to know. Well, one, in all due respect, it's like it's like like this piece here. I mean, you you got to be it's got to be transparent. The, you got to put the issues on the table. That's why I make the point is that as far as I'm concerned, the incumbent mayor like Charlie Hale, for instance, mm -hmm. right now he's sure he's given his so-called uh, city, uh, city of the club. union, uh, city, city club, club. Deal, state of the union address, city, so to right. speak, aspect of it. Mm -hmm. But that should be very transparent. I mean, that's the city club at noon on Friday. <laughs> Where is the bulk of the people? At work. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm saying. See, <laughs> that should be done maybe in a, in a Saturday kind of a setting, if you will. Yeah. And all the media should be there. All the media should be there and communicate to all three of them, whether it be cable, mm -hmm. whether it be cable access, and eight. But see, in some cases, if you can't pick up, if you can't pay for Comcast, you can't get this. You see right. what I mean? Right. Uh, a lot of people don't read the newspapers. Right. You know what I mean? So my point is that they're gonna have to take city. They're gonna have to take the so-called city club of Portland, which is not, not only the, the spokesperson that's great. They got to take it out to communities. They have to take it out there to the area to speak to people but in their language. Man. But you have to realize, who does the city club uh, cater to? Well, that's Correct. what I'm saying. Absolutely. But that's, that, but that's what I'm that's, saying. That's business and, no, and high-profile people. No, I'm agreeing with you, but my, yeah. if you notice, know, you just say city club. Yeah. But what about these other things? They, they got, like I said, they got seven neighborhood associations. Mm -hmm. That's where the communication should be, you know, mm -hmm. meaning that that's the rationale for getting, mm -hmm. e giving the responsibility to those, to those city council folks, mm -hmm. because they're just sitting up there. Right. Get them out there to mm -hmm. the community and let them educate the folks about what the issues are on the table, mm -hmm. what is left on the table and what's being proposed. Right. One of the things, Bob, I think he brought up a good point, and that is when you look at the city club and who's, who's members of the city yeah, club, yeah. we're looking at basically the shakers and movers of the city yeah, of Portland. Exactly, exactly. And if they fund a candidate, you know, you know, and there's a lot of talk about this nationally mm -hmm. as well as locally in terms of if you fund a candidate, then the candidate is more likely to uh, agree with with, with, them. Uh, yeah, with yeah. them. So we have to look at funding. You know, who's funding your campaign? Who's funding the, the campaign of these uh, these 17 people or 11 people, or whatever, that's running for mayor? And because they're better able to reach out to the public based on the, the, the campaign funding uh, situation that they that they're participating mm -hmm, in, mm -hmm. and and how is that how is that going to translate into solutions that 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 will work and that is uh, needed in the community? I'm agreeing with you. In fact, in fact, it's not going to be the city club in my administration. It's going to be the neighborhood associations. Mm -hmm. That's key. That's getting to the people. The neighborhood associations. You're going to you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna have gatherings when folks are going to be there available. Right. That's going to be very, very key. Excellent. You know I mean? Excellent. And, and, and people are going to still have their own little private entities, but it's not going to be just a city club event. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a neighborhood association event. Mm -hmm. and, that's a and then they can get to them through newsletters and word of mouth and neighbors and this, that, and the other. So we just need to change the format a bit. Right. And I'm not taking out anything about the people who have the monies and whatever. They can still do that if they want to. But the fact of the matter is the people who the people are going to be known. We've got to make it very transparent, mm -hmm. very, very important. Mm -hmm. If, in mm -hmm. fact, we're going to resolve some of the problems we need. Right. Well, you look at campaign financing in, in, in the sense that uh, there's a forum going on with OPB on the candidate for mayor, and you've been excluded. Yep, yep. yep. Now, how does, that, how, how does that work? I mean... Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, that, right. I'm saying I, my, my whole thing is neighborhood associations. Mm -hmm. You got my point? And, and, uh, and then the other thing, too, is that I, I've run for a number of the office, and, and when you get invited to get interviewed uh, with candidates, this, that, and the other, they, you know, things like, what's the price of milk? I mean, wait a minute, let's talk about the issues. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what's the price of milk, and, and what about this, and what about that? What the, my point is that they don't have any background in terms of what the issues are. Right. See, that's the problem. They're, the person they're asking the question yes. is, is going strictly from something they heard yes. rather than something they yes. know. Yes, yes. And that's, the, and that's the bad, that's what has happened. Our politics have been watered down. Yes, yes. And I like the fact that you're talking about Let's get back to the real just issue basic, just of sense. politics yes. and taking care yes. of the city of Portland and the people yes. of Portland. Yes, very much so. In fact, we got three, several major newspapers. We got the Portland Tribune, mm -hmm. we got the Willamette Week, and, we, and we've got the Oregonian. Mm -hmm. Those are the three major ones. And each have their own way of interviewing issues. Right. Mm -hmm. And each doesn't have problems. And I'm saying, as far as I'm concerned, they're, they're, in a, they're in a very, as far as I'm concerned, a very strategic position. Why don't you list down the, 
the issues, uh -huh, uh -huh. the issues that you may think are the issues, uh -huh. give them, give them to the candidates before they come, uh -huh. <laughs> and then discuss it. Right. right. Well, I, I just want to just put a plug in for uh, our neighborhood newspapers, the Scanner, oh, the Scanner observer, observer. you know, and, in terms of and, and inviting the public, the the general public to to, to look for those newspapers to, to, and uh, to partake in those newspapers. But but I just want to just cover you some of the point. It's very I, I agree with you. Now you know we have we are broken down from the standpoint of the newspapers aspect. You got you get get minority newspapers aspect of it, right. but they need to be given taken up to another level. My point is that. If in fact uh, you, you you have if you're identifying with with the black community, then communicate mm -hmm. to the the majority of the mm -hmm. of the community mm -hmm. about what black folks are about. Mm -hmm. You know, for instance, in this election, uh, I'm very familiar about the fact the number of blacks who are running. They should be on the front page of that paper, letting the pe the black community know right. who's running for office. Mm -hmm. And if I had anything to say, I would let them run the debate. I mean, mm -hmm. we actually mm -hmm. have a gathering, if you will, mm -hmm. right. introducing these folks, mm -hmm. doing a good bottom line, making sure that they know what the issues are. Accountability. Man. Accountability. Yeah. It's very, very important. Very, very that be important. It, whether it be a Hispanic newspaper, the Asian reporter, yeah. or any of them for that matter. Right. It's very, very important. Because yeah. when you start getting to the big ones, the, 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 the Oregonian and the Tribune and this, that, and the other, the Week, you, you're out of sync. Right. Yeah. We we uh, we moving really kind of fast in the sense of try, trying to get a lot of things in. Yeah, good on, keep going. Yeah, we want to get it. You know, when the time is going, so we really going to have to break out some of the stuff. Talk to me. Affordable housing. Yes. I don't know if you've been down Williams Avenue and Beach in, mm -hmm. in that area oh, any time it, recently. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Congestion. Oh, it's ridiculous. It is terrible. It's ridiculous. Affordable housing. Uh, for the members of the community, the lack of housing, mm -hmm. the whole gentrification aspect of mm -hmm. moving folks out to the numbers and so forth, particularly African Americans mm -hmm. and so forth. What, what, how would you approach some solutions in, 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 in that area? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, in all due respect, that's another, another sweet, uh, something that I'm, I'm very sensitive to in that we've elected a number of leaders. You know, when you, th when you put those things in quadrants aspect of it, sure, you may have a, a city council, a city commissioner, but you also have a state legislature in there mm -hmm. too. You have a state senator in there too. You have a congressman in there too. You have a senator, uh, you, uh, you know what I mean? Governor. But my point is that those folks are not responding. Right. You know, it, like for instance, I, I saw Earl Blumenauer on on the on the straight talk the other day. Yesterday, I seen it too. You saw that too. Yeah, yeah. And here he has this woman from New York <laughs> sitting in there talking about bicycles, 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 and and taking the streets. So in all due respect, he's the guy who's responsible for doing this kind of thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then you know that's New York style, but that mm -hmm. New York is New York. You, you know, you got to have this, this is not Times Square. Yeah, yeah, this is yeah, this is well, not New York. New York. New York is an island. Yeah, but still, and what most people don't realize, and so it's only so much yeah, right, room right. there, so they can only do. Mm -hmm. They have to do things right, because right. they can't they can't uh, sustain all of those cars. But this takes what they have community. done here yeah, is, is they have uh, uh, de desensitized the neighborhood. Yeah. You know, and brought all these bicycles right, in. Right. They've taken old established business, tore them down, or moved them out to bring in and and add more right. people but we elected, into the but city. But we elected those leaders to do that. Well, as in making them more accountable. You see what right, I'm saying? Right. See, so, but but if you don't know what's going on, and that's the thing well, that's I what found we're out. About right now, that if you don't it. know what's going on, <laughs> that's what we're talking about. You you're closing the barn door after the horses have gotten yeah, out, yeah, yeah. and that's what they did on Williams Avenue. That's what they did on Vancouver, Alberta, Alberta, Mississippi, uh, Mississippi, a place where nobody wanted to live. Then ask yourself the question: Who do you elect? <laughs> Right, right. I mean, you know, well, I think yeah. too is not only who elected again, who funded <coughs> the campaign of oh, yeah. certain oh, yeah. individuals to where well, the, the no, developers, where the mm. developers can get more of a hearing with uh, certain uh, council members than other. Yeah, they other paid people. for it. Right, right. They, they paid the because be African Americans, for the most part, we don't have a lot, a lot of money to influence uh, campaigns of, of particular, particular people. And may not get the representation, but you that's have the needed. Vote. But the we vote got is the, the most powerful. Absolutely. But my point is that the vote is not organized. You got my point? Right. It's right. the divide routine. So that's why I say that if you list the issues, 
then the, the person happens to be second. You know what I mean? Because you know, when, when you put the issues up there and then you ask the person, okay, do you understand the issues uh -huh. and do you have a solution to the issue, then you just happen to be the person and then you can get elected that way. Right. That's the way it should be. What's the solution for the lack of housing? The, the lack of housing and all due respect, again, here I go again. You know, the, the big money is sitting up in Congress and we got two people representing that arena and that's I.E., uh, Senator Ron Wyden, and, uh, and, and, and Earl yeah, and Earl yeah. Blumenauer. I'm just saying oh. for this respective area aspect. Oh, okay. that's my point. Mm -hmm. But my point is that they're doing other things. I mean, i.e., the money drives them over in other areas. Like I said, you saw straight talk. You know, Earl was was projecting himself as a bicyclist. Mm -hmm. You got my point. Mm -hmm. And then when the marijuana thing came to the table, mm -hmm. well, in all due respect, both of them, both Earl and and Ron, were basically pushing the marijuana issue aspect of it. In fact, they're leading the charge right now, trying to find banking. Mm -hmm. uh, for the money, because it's a, it's really against the uh, law against the on the federal, federal side. Yeah. It's a federal law aspect of it. And but rather than them spending the time talking mm -hmm. to the issue of housing and mm -hmm. with HUD and whatever, and i.e. relating to those situations, we're not doing that. So we don't. We're lacking leadership that way. Now, on the other hand, you got you got you got uh, uh, who am I thinking about? Dan Sol Dan Salzman, not was it Dan? Yeah, yeah. Dan, Dan Salzman, who's a city council person. Mm -hmm. Okay, Dan is, has got good background in housing because his parents were in housing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he mm -hmm. made quite a bit of money in the housing piece. So, so the name it again. My point exactly. You see, so my point is that uh, I'm gonna appoint him to the housing thing. <laughs> he, he's gonna be in the district with the housing aspect of it, and so that I just ask him those questions. Okay, my point is that well, you you. Been very successful doing the things with, with with your housing complex and maintaining them. Then maybe you need to apply to me. How are you dealing with rent control? You know those kinds of questions mm -hmm. and have him get back to the people transparent wise. You got my point? Mm -hmm. But so my point is that we don't have the leadership. We're lacking the leadership. Mm -hmm. We need a good solid mayor. And, and I and I'm, I'm familiar with Wheeler. You know he's a kind of an accountant guy aspect of it. You got the young kid from from the county and whatever. But I'm concerned about whether or not they're going to take that leadership to talk about some of the things that I'm talking about right mm -hmm. now. And that's, the, that's their right, mm -hmm. because we're all creatures of our exposure. Right. But that's my platform. But I don't have a million bucks in the bank. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Now, on the housing, uh, on that housing issue, one of the things that's been in the news is that uh, out-of-state uh, contractors are coming into Portland buying up the housing, uh, buying up flipping in the and yeah. to flip. Uh, to turn, uh, to redevelop, change the makeup of the neighborhood. I mean, there's some neighborhoods that we used to call old and uh, established that are now are so modern that you know you walk, you go. I don't remember being over here. Yeah. So how do you, you know? I know we talk about the money. The money is the driving force. That's it. Uh, and the power. But how do we maintain Portland? Well, Bob, as the as well, that well, driving force well, come into being. Okay, well, Bob, in all due respect, that's why it's so so it's so important to get the right leadership, meaning that they would be aware of these kinds of things that are happening around the country. You know, here in Portland, Oregon, routine. You know, you got this it's this pristine place, if you will. You got neighborhoods and this, that, and the other. And see, if all of a sudden you start seeing an influx of people expanding, like I said before, mm -hmm. the baby boomers kids are educated now. They, they you know, they're back east and this, that, and then they got money. You can't say no. You can't you can't put a wall around the city of Portland mm -hmm. because money is money. It just follows. But my point is that if you got the right leadership. They will know these things, and all of a sudden, uh, for instance, uh, we we had a housing program. You know, we had Habitat for Humanity. They said, "Who are these people that have gotten these houses?" You know what I'm saying? How do they get these houses? And we want to make sure that, they, that those communities stay in place, if you will. Mm -hmm. So to mean that, so when that things happen, we've got some guards, if you will, to prevent mm -hmm. that. Like for instance, say, "Okay, fine, you got this house for uh, Habitat for Humanity, or you got City of Portland the low income housing aspect of it." Oh, wait a minute, you just can't sell that house for hundred for six hundred thousand dollars. And you only paid a hundred thousand dollars for it. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. No. Well, we, we're going to say, okay, fine. If you opt to do that, we're going to go down the list of the person who's waiting mm -hmm. to put them in that situation. Mm -hmm. You want to leave? You can leave, <laughs> but you on your own. Maybe you got your job and you, this, that, and other. But you can't just put four hundred thousand. You pay a hundred, and you put four hundred dollars in your pocket after two years of living. My in point is, that some well, of, you my, have to give them a time. No, but no, but I'm just saying right. that needs to be discussed. Right. I'm just saying right. the communities should be. Uh, it, it should be something that should be of value, and right. you got to have the right leadership in place, or the right. policies in place, mm -hmm. to make sure it happens. Because I agree. Because that. leaders change every election, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the money changes at every election. Mm -hmm. So you got to have the kind of policies that maintains the community, 
talks to the youth, talks to education. That's why we elect all these folks. Mm -hmm. But we're not mm -hmm. taking it serious, like you're saying. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, homelessness is uh, a major issue when you consider when, we, when you go downtown and you just drive yep. past Union Gospel Mission, when you drive past uh, Old yep. Town and, and situations like that. I, I'm, I, I'm still not clear on <laughs> how the revenue that the the, 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 the prices of, of, of houses how that can be impacted by uh, uh, the mayor's office and maybe you can enlighten me on mm -hmm. how that can, how the mayor's office can and what approach they're going to take to alleviate some of the homelessness that mm -hmm. is and, and I think they move they move a lot of the homeless out to Gretchen. near Wal yeah. in, in near Walmart and, yeah. and yeah. As, as well. Right. And yeah. what what is your plan to deal with that as mayor? Because you're going to be be mayor of the whole oh, city. Yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Okay. Well, in all due respect, it's a crisis. It's a problem. I, in all due, if I had if I was sitting in there, I would not have done what what Charlie did. I mean, he, he was just kind of like an open door kind of a policy aspect of it. I mean, not only that, we're, we're facing the summer. If we're just getting ready to face the summer, we always have oh. a little bit more of an issue of people sleeping outside and this, that, and the other. But for him to come out and say, well, okay, fine, you can, you can sleep on the sidewalks and, and you can sleep anywhere you want, that kind of a deal, and then go around making a few deals with some of the apartment owners or whatever. It was a deal, by the way. They, they're not just giving those properties up so homeless can go in these houses. Mm -hmm. They're getting tax breaks and, and you know what I mean? They, they're getting paid, if you will. So uh, that's, that was a mistake. It really was a mistake. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think there's some things that I, I'm looking at in terms of, of change. And, um, and I think, like for instance, the vets. You know, I've, I've been downtown since I since I run for. I'm, I'm acting as if I'm mayor now. When I file and run for, I'm mayor now. I'll be mayor until the 17th of May. Mm -hmm. You understand? Know That's my attitude that mm -hmm. I'm taking. But I've gone down to City Hall and I've asked the question. Well, where are the where are the vets? They couldn't give me the list. It was a silly old runaround kind of a deal. Then I went out in the streets myself just to check things out, mm -hmm. looking under under the, over at the train station and looking at people just sleeping under under that steel and women, men and women both, mm -hmm. if you will. And the drug use drugs, and so and the drugs. Right. And you got this car, this this van running around giving free needles and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then you got another guy over here selling them. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's crazy. It's just a crazy situation. And so, the, and the so, homes that they, I mean, that they're up, the place they have placed them is on uh, Greeley, off of Greeley. Well, they're all, they're all over, Bob. You know, they're I mean, all over, Bob. But my they, point is they took a, 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 vibrant, a vibrant neighborhood, you know. Um, but what do you get rid of? That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. Well, you gotta, but my point is that here's the deal. You got to, this is my attitude, mm -hmm. okay. You got the vets. I was looking for the vets to start right. with because people feel a bit more sensitive to the vets. You know, sure. Thanks for serving. Okay. Sure. So the name of the game, and they got benefits that are sitting there. A lot of them have benefits, they, but they haven't gone in to, 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 to actually to, 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 to qualify for them. Mm -hmm. But if you got them in an if you got them in a contained kind of event, you can go around and basically find out their names and do they have the mm -hmm. 214? Are they really vets? Get the VA to get involved in that process. Then all of a sudden they got a check. Now they can pay the rent. Uh -huh, See what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So you can take those folks out <laughs> and you pay those folks who don't have the deal. Mm -hmm. Then the then the other folks, you got a lot of folks surprisingly are coming from other cities. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. You got a lot of crime out there. You got Well they get a one way got, ticket. Yeah, but, but my point is that <laughs> yeah. in my particular <laughs> game, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna get my one way ticket back <laughs> to where you and, and make sure I pick up the services that were paid, <laughs> if you will, from that other city. Right. No, but it's it's a problem all over the place. One one last thing, Bruce, yeah, uh because you're talking about if they get a check and they're able to pay the rent. There's been recently there a case where a person bought a, uh, a condo mm -hmm. over in the Pearl District for $2 million. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And $1 million dollars and is nothing in that area in terms of the price of that area. Right. No vet can afford that. No, no. No, when I say that, now you don't give the money to the vet. Now, understand me, you, you got low-income housing. You can find housing, if you will. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can even build. I built I built a senior citizen complex before. I've seen you. I know. You know, what I'm know you, and so my point yeah. is that there's some opportunities there to build low-income housing for you know, for that, I say low-income, not not uh, 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 not homeless, low-income housing. You understand mm -hmm. what I mean? There's a difference because that, that's sort of a reinforcement if you put them in that category, then a person just sit there forever. Right. And I've talked to a lot of those guys out there. Well, where is low-income housing in Portland today? Where well, is it? All over. They, they, all call, over? they call them tents. <laughs> <laughs> well, well tents right they now, have. They you have gotta some, clean that up, buddy. They have some low-income <laughs> housing downtown. 
They do? Oh, yeah. Well, they, they identify um, them with development. And, 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 and what, and, but what they have done <laughs> is they've taken, like, guys that have gone through drug treatment and things of this that's nature. That's transitional housing. And they, and they mean, put, you know, I got, I, got, I got guys that's been down there for five, six years. Now, what's and that, the transition? And that, and that's another, well, <laughs> that's, that's a problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A lot of folks are not, they, they, they really don't qualify. They really yeah. don't qualify. But they're making sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year. Right. They know the paperwork. Right. They right. know the system. You right. understand what I'm saying? Right. That's another issue. You know, we, we, you know that auditor is going to do a bigger job under my my right. team. She's going to have to we're going to get put a, a few more dollars in in her office. And next week, so and things. next week maybe we can talk about. Oh, we can talk some more. Addiction oh, yeah. and oh, the mental health, health, mental health. Oh, mental health. That's huge. It's huge. That's huge. What what is your solution? What is there, some of your proposals? Well, one, one of the solutions, we need, we need another facility like Damage was. Remember they had the Damage, and then mm-hmm, all of a sudden mm-hmm. they, they took the land and, and built high-rises and this, that, and Yeah, well, the they, 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 they have they, no place they, to go. Because they put the people back in the community. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 that's Issued appeals they and stuff for them, and then they sell them on the street. Mm-hmm. See, that's another problem. You understand what I mean? I mean, I think the cuckoo's nest here. Well, people coming out from jail without without mental health meds and, and oh, it's, it's, wind up being, you know, transient downtown. Right. Well, it's a problem. You know, it when is. I when I heard all what, what, for instance, they got this one building, and it actually was a Bud Clark com- complex kind of a deal. Mm-hmm. It, they named it after him. And, and a lot of the guys was telling me that, well, Bruce, you can shoot heroin in there anytime you want mm-hmm. to. Oh, the, I mean, drug, the I mean, drug issues no, 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 down. No, I'm just saying it was okay to yeah. shoot heroin. And I'm saying, you've got to be kidding me. You, we got an epidemic over here. People are saying about, well, gee, we, we got to get rid of this stuff. And then at the same time, these same people are paying for the needles, giving them the needle at no, at no cost. Mm-hmm. It blows your mind. Mm-hmm. It's insulting. Yeah. So anyway, we got about another two minutes and whatever. As you can see, we're gonna, yeah, that's why I'm saying I'm taking a lot of time here so that we can talk. I just happen to be not the, the same one. We're going to have other folks around the table. We're going to be asking them the question. And in right. fact, I'm even saying to them right now, up front, the top three can come to the table. Uh-huh. So I'm, I'm, I'm even saying, <laughs> but, but we want inter- I want to interview them all. Right. I want to interview them all. Everybody that's running for mayor, uh, please contact me. You can contact me at 503-701-0457. 503-701-0457. That's the city part. Mm-hmm. Those are people, the, the two people, the people who are running for city council and the people who are running for mayor. Give me a call <coughs> and we'll set up a little time where you can meet these guys right here. You're going to be meeting them. They're going to ask, they're going to be asking you some questions and I'll be asking you some questions. So again, thank you for being with us. Look like we've got about, uh, probably about another minute or so, if I'm not mistaken. But, um, but I think that's, this is going to be a very important and we're going to, I, I want to thank, uh, Portland Community Access for giving us the opportunity to do this. I don't know of any format like this in the city. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 because they're too short, as far as I'm concerned. All of the ones that I've seen, they give you a minute to speak or mm-hmm. two minutes to speak, or you get 20 Three people minutes. all at the same time. No, you get one or two people sitting around the table. Maybe straight talk if you got a lot of money. If you got a lot of money. If you ain't got no money, <laughs> you, you can forget about it. Yeah, we go off the air, let me ask you. I know this is, this is a good one to leave with the people okay, also. Girl. How how are you going to get the city council and the county commissioners to work, work together? together? To work together? Yeah. Well, that don't you know you don't have to answer that no, now. No, very simple. But you, that's my no, question. No, as far as I'm concerned, we pay, we're paying we, we're spending double the money. Uh-huh. Should be on the one roof. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Should be uh, under one roof. Should be under one roof. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Right? I mean, but anyway, that's that's just a side note. Okay, yeah. we'll argue about that point on that end. We, we're not gonna argue. We're gonna discuss it. Does this sound good? Like <laughs> but guys, thank you very much for being with me, and, and I'm looking forward to you guys being on, being a part of this process. Okay. Hey, be thanks, okay with sure. you guys? Sure. thanks okay. for bringing me back. Good, good, and thanks very much. Okay. All right. All right, good. Okay, folks, I'll see you next week. Have a good one.